guys in this video I want to show you how I made a Mrs. Claus face cake now this is a bit of a sped up version of the one that I did over on the cake international online group so I just start with a round chocolate cake and we're going to sandwich it together in the middle using some chocolate buttercream and now I'm going to trim it down so I'm not going to worry if the chocolate doesn't go fully to the outside edges of this one, okay? And guys, if you want to use a smaller cake and do less carving, that's fine. My cake was actually a bit bigger than what I needed and slightly dry on the edges, so I wanted to cut those edges off a little bit. So on this one, I kind of drew an outside line with my knife. So I cut out just a small little divot all the way around for where I want the outline to be. So there's like an oval shape for the head and then we've got the shoulders and that little triangle below the oval is the neck. Then we drew in the hairline and then like a big piece of hair on the top of a head. And I removed the off cuts, all those extra, extra bits from the side. So I then go a little bit deeper in some of the lines. So below the face, I cut more out so that the cake isn't as high up as the face itself. And then we're just going to take the top of the hair down a bit there as well. So the full version of this, guys, I did do on the Cake International page. And you'll be able to view it in the Cake International online group until December 2020. Or the end of December, I think, 2020. But you do need a ticket to watch that event. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the eyes. What I'm also going to do, guys, is put links below this video so you can see everything that I've used. We've pressed the eyes in just a little bit to give them a little bit of an indentation, and I'm going to cover the whole thing in buttercream. Now, I actually did this as a live video, so I didn't spend as long as I probably should have on the buttercream. You guys that watch me regularly will know this is usually the case because a lot of these videos I do live at the time, and then the YouTube version ends up a little bit shortened. Once you've buttercreamed it, you can put it in the fridge. And I'm going to take some black modeling paste now. I want to make her some glasses. So I've just got a clay extruder with a round end. And we're squeezing through the black modeling paste. I'm using modeling paste rather than fondant. So it sets a little bit harder for the glasses. And I just want a piece long enough that I can wrap around my little circle cutter. And we're going to make two of these. A bit of water on the end. Or you can use edible glue just to stick it together. Carefully remove the circle. And then exactly the same again so if I don't put it around a circle cutter I'm not very good at getting a perfect circle I mean it's still probably not perfect anyway now I'm not sure how far apart these glasses are going to end up being but what I'm going to do is create a couple of short little pieces that will go between the two sides of the glasses and I'm going to put them to one side for later now the next thing I'm going to do is choose my skin color so I'm going to use the Renshaw's ready to roll icing, which is the same as, as fondant. I think fondant's the American word and sugar paste ready to roll icing is the English word for it. I think ideally the brown and the pale one would be nice together, but I'm just going to use the latte color one just for speeding things up. So I'm not mixing all the colors and I've just put this over the face. Now, had I had time to put mine in the fridge, the chocolate buttercream wouldn't stick to the fondant like it has done on my off cuts pressing on those eyes again a little bit more so we get a bit of a dip where the eyes are going to go and then I'm using my balling tool to go even deeper for the actual eye socket and I was very torn between giving out open eyes or closed eyes on this one I thought she might look a little bit cuter with closed eyes so we just want a ball of the same color that we used for the flesh in each eye try not to flatten them down too much and then a tiny little oval for the nose now the color the, I would say the skin tone looks very pale actually on this one I wish I had spent the time in mixing colour and gone in a going a little bit darker. So we're just going to put a tiny little line in there for a mouth. I've done it slightly to one side rather than central. And we're going to use some edible dust for some blusher on the cheeks. Maybe a little bit on the nose. Even a tiny bit on the eyelids. I'm going to go back to using the black modelling paste. We're going to roll it with a point on each end. And then I'm going to cut across the middle at a diagonal. These are going to go across the middle of each of my eyes, closed eyes like that. She looks much nicer as soon as those eyelashes are on. I'm going to cut a little semicircle of the skin tone for around the neck. And I've got some white marshmallow uh, ready to roll paste this time. It does actually taste really nice, this one. It tastes marshmallowy. Just watch out for all that buttercream. So remember, guys, if you have time, put yours in the fridge. The buttercream's going to firm up, and then you're not going to end up with a buttercream everywhere like what I, I kind of did. So the top bit of the hair first. 
excuse my face being in the way. I'm going to press a little bit here. Now I have washed my hands, guys. And also it's going to be me that eats this cake as well. Or maybe my dad. My dad eats a lot of the cakes that I have. Let's put a little sort of piece at the top that's got a point on. So that instead of it just looking like a normal bun that would be on the head, it, it looks kind of like the frosting of a cupcake or something on her hair. Just to make it look slightly different to the usual style we would give Mrs. Claus. And it doesn't have to be Mrs. Claus. You can change the skin and hair colour and make any kind of character you want like this. I think the glasses are my favourite part on this one. So we're rolling smaller pieces again of the fondant or sugar paste. And we're just going to try and cover each side of the hair. I've got a little bit that's of cake and buttercream on show there. So I'm just putting a piece of fondant in there. And I apologise, I do keep calling it fondant sometimes. And then sometimes I call it sugar paste. Let's put ears in. So it's a little ball that we've pressed in the middle with the balling tool. And then we've cut it in half. And we're just going to press that against the side of the head. Maybe even just a little piece of hair just covering the join there like that. Put some hairlines in there. And we're going to just repeat for the other side. So I cut a very rough shape before I stick it on. But it's very rough. Cut off any extra from around the edge. Just press down where that ear is going to be. Otherwise the ear will stand out too much if we don't press the hair down. Some hairlines again. I'm going to use some red for her top. Let's cut out a bit of a disc so it goes around that neckline. Now her shoulders, her shoulders go right up to her face on this one, but it's fine. We're going to add a bit of a trim to her top later. And don't worry that there's a bit of a gap. Can you see between her shoulders or the fondant on the shoulders and her face? That is going to change. So I've got two fairly chunky pieces that we're going to put a roll into teardrops. And these are going to be the bit that kind of, there's like almost like a fur trim on her top. But I want it to look like really cozy and warm. So it's going to go right up to her face. But we'll leave those to the side for a minute while we play around with the hair. So I'm thinking a little headband. So a small piece just there like that. And then I think probably a bow on that as well. To one side. So let's try and get two pieces the same size. And we're going to press them almost into like a heart shape. And then we're going to put a couple of lines in the pointy bit. Sticking it on with water. Give it a good firm press on in place and then a little oval in the middle. Now just check that your glasses have started to firm up. They did start to firm up fairly quickly because they're modeling paste. But if they're very soft, don't put them on until they have hardened. Otherwise they'll bend around the face. Let's put that middle bit on. Again, they're just stuck with a tiny bit of water, guys. Let's give her some eyebrows because I did forget her eyebrows. Just little carrot shapes in white. I'm going to now cover the background. So I've got the Renshaw's Extra in the pale blue here. Again, I'll link everything I've used below the video. And we're going to trim off anything that goes beyond the board. And now I'm using piping gel to cover, you know, those teardrops that we made earlier that kind of flattened down a bit. Sorry, my head's in the way again. And we're using these like little sugar crystal things. So these are the rainbow dust sugar crystals just to give it a bit of texture. And then we're folding them onto the top. If you do it onto some paper, you can fold up your paper and then you can put any leftover ones just back in the pot. I think I'm going to just add a bit of colour to her hair. So I did want her to have white hair, but I think because it looks fairly plain, we're going to just add a bit of pink into the hairlines that we put. So all the creases at the top of the pieces of hair. And you can do a lot more shading with the edible powders than what I have done, if you like, because it was a Facebook Live. Again, I was a bit limited with the time. And you can always put some kind of patterning on the board. Now, I was going to try and find a snowflake cutter. I couldn't find one to hand when I was doing this video. So I just opted for putting little dots of fondant on the background. Just so it wasn't too plain. And that's it, guys. That's my Mrs. Claus cake. So I have done quite a few other Christmas face cake videos. I've done a polar bear, penguin, and I've forgotten what else. But I've done a few. So... You can check those out over on my YouTube channel as well. And it's great to see what you guys have made. So if you want to tag me in any of your creations you've made using my videos, I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.